Wait, what does that even mean? Why are they talking about how hairy my legs are? This is a car video. Hey, Ethan. Oh, hey. Have you noticed something on our YouTube channel? It's really good? No, there's one style of car missing. No, we've driven everything. Trust me, there's one style. Wait here, I'll be right back. All right, whatever. It's a wagon! It's an estate. I don't care what you call it, can I drive it? Yeah, but for today and for today only, we're wagon wheels boy. I don't care. Uh, whatever you Go want to call it. it. I just want to drive it. Activated. Mark, what am I sitting in? Good question. It's a Belgian volley. Volley? Yeah. How do you spell that? V-A-L-L-I. That's not valley? No, apparently it is volley. Bali does sound like more Chinese. Did wonder about that, yeah. Precisely, it doesn't actually have a Chinese name. So, Bali is its Chinese name. Oh. So, and there is no sort of uh, Chinese characters for it for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, okay. Well, the most important thing is that we are finally driving a wagon on the Wheels Boy channel. Yeah. We there have... are not many of them. There are not many of them. Even, yeah. in, even in the Chinese market, We have. I have professed my love for wagons in so many videos, and yet never actually driven one on camera so yep. hold on i'm on a, i'm on the road let's see acceleration so this is 1.5 turbo engine okay and feels like it <laughs> yep it's 105 kilowatts okay 105 about about 145 horsepower yeah yep. so you say 250 newton meters of torque yeah 250 newton meters so about uh i'm used to doing this conversion 185 pound feet I hope so. You'll take my. Uh, you <laughs> I'll can, take your word you for it. You can take my American word for it. About 185 pound feet. Well, I think this 1.5. So Baljun is a is a brand from SGMW, and so it's also this motor is probably the same 1.5 that I drove in the Wuling Hongguang Plus. That yeah, we quite drove possibly. On the so it's a three-way joint venture. Right. So you've got um, SAIC, Psych. You've got General Motors, and you've got Wuling. There now go. Wuling is very much the uh, minority partner so they own 5.9 percent ah yeah <laughs> well that makes all the difference at least they're in the room <laughs> yeah at least they're in the room i can yeah. appreciate that yeah um well uh i just put my foot into it a minute ago and i will say uh it's not an rs6 avant is it <laughs> certainly not unsurprisingly no. um it I, is adequate it's definitely adequate yeah it feels good it's not a small car no, it's not. We'll get out and look at the exterior yeah, in a little bit, but it's, this uh, is not small. It's just shy of 4.7 meters. Ooh, okay. Not yeah. small at all. No, it's 4,685 millimeters. 4,685 millimeters. He's got all yeah. the exact numbers. <laughs> Thank you for having that off the top of your head. Well, um, it doesn't accelerate particularly quickly, but it doesn't feel especially well, slow either. I mean, what for, it, for its size and for a 1.5 turbo, I think it's adequate. It, I don't know what it does it in, probably somewhere around about 9 or 10 seconds, I'm guessing. That feels right. What's the transmission? It's, in this one, it's supposedly, well, it's a CVT, yeah. and they claim it's 8 speed. Well, hold on. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Well, hold on there. How can you have 8, CVT is continuously variable transmission. There are no gears. Now, yeah. you can, you can, a lot of like Subaru and stuff, you can have, it has fake gears, basically, yeah. that the computer this must gives be the case. Out. Yeah. But they, they're obviously I, simulated in some way. But even Subaru doesn't say, doesn't claim like, oh, our CVT is an eight, is a six speed or a seven speed. They just go like, it's got manual shift. Probably, I think it'll go up to six speeds. Well, that's that's a new. I've never heard that one. Yeah. You well, said this one has a CVT though. Yeah. They're on what they call the beggars edition. <laughs> the poverty. Yeah, I would call that the poverty spec. I've always heard it as the beggars edition. <laughs> Um, the, so there are actually four different um, mo uh, models in this range, okay. and the base model, mm -hmm. which is a bargain, 79,800 RMB. Like uh, 11 to tw 12 to $13,000 or something so. Something like about. that. I do uh. have it written down, but I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. You remembered 4,785 millimeters or whatever. 4,680. Sorry, sorry. So I'll give you, <laughs> so, it's okay if you don't remember everything. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Oh, what's so, the, what's this top range one going to cost? This you? one is one hundred and five thousand eight hundred. One hundred and five thousand. Yeah. 100, I mean, so like fifteen, a little over fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen to something 16, like that. I think sixteen thousand. If I can remember, sixteen thousand something. I can remember. Uh, certainly a respectable price. Yep. Uh, nice yeah, return. so, yeah, yeah, so the um, low spec oh. has got a six-speed manual. And notice it's a six-speed six manual, not a five-speed manual. Qua? A yeah. six-speed yeah, manual precisely, transmission? Precisely. All right. So that's Why didn't you bring guy. me that one, Mark? <laughs> Why am I in this the, the, the eight-speed CVT? The dealers never have the lowest spec ones. It's true. And also, quite honestly, Chinese do not like driving manual cars in general. It's true. Yeah. It used to be that I remember when I first got here years ago in like 2013, even all of the um, taxis and stuff were all sticks, were all manuals, yeah. and that's that's going away. Oh, well, maybe that's because they're becoming EVs. I was going to say one reason yeah. is because they're all becoming EVs, but well, that's 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 a shame. I would have loved to experience a six speed. I don't imagine that it would have been uh, in any way a, a thrilling six speed manual. It's not going to have the engagement of a Porsche or anything oh, as okay. I make a U turn here engagement of a Porsche or anything. Oh, well, hold on. It seems as though I've shifted from drive into what is an S. So I assume is the sport mode. Now I'm going to yeah. give it the beans and see if there's a difference. It shifts slightly more aggressively. You reckon? I, yeah. I don't think that there's... Let me see if there's any there's difference. There's noise. In the, there's, there's different noise. There's noise. Uh, yeah, I think the engine any at any RPM can best be described mm. as producing noise, <laughs> not really anything. Yeah, there's particularly. not much momentum. No, <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things that produced it turns uh, fossil fuels into sound uh, and, and, gas. Not, <laughs> and not particularly speed. Well, I would say yes. The sport mode isn't particularly. Yeah. You uh, can actually with drive. You can also shove it into a manual shift type thing if you shift it across. We found we have found ourselves in the in the land of red lights here, but yeah. I will do that. So you need to put it into yeah yeah. Now I'm here. Yeah. Oh, we're making a lot of noise, and we're gaining. We've on made the a lot of here. noise. We have changed speeds successfully yeah. from slow to less slow. Yeah. Um, well, the only other thing I was going to say is we've got an eco mode. Yeah. Um, but I I, I think at this point we've talked about well actually you know we I haven't commented about it, is the the the, it's the handling. Um, Are you talking about the steering? Or well, the... the steering in particular oh is, what's a good term? Loosey goosey. Yeah. It is technically, I think, what is used to turn the front wheels. But there is I allegedly only, some sort of connection. There's there. allegedly some sort of connection, but you certainly can't feel it from holding onto the steering wheel. A fine steering wheel. Yeah. Well, yes, this is not a, a sports car, but I would say that this driving experience is more or less what I would expect. Yeah. It's fine, but I think now it's time for us to stop it and talk a little bit about the interior. What do you think? Well, yeah, good thing. But one thing, what about what do you think of the driving seat position? Well, I feel like I'm sitting on top of it. Uh, I feel like the seating position is pretty high, and I also feel yeah, like it's incredibly high. Uh, I, I mean, I, I just feel like I'm hitting the roof. In fact, not uh, a lot of headspace. There's really very little headspace. Not a lot of headspace in this thing. In the front, and you don't expect that. No, I do not. Well, we'll see. I'm, maybe in a minute we'll get into the rear and find out what the space is there. But let's let's stop and talk about the interior. All right, Mark, we've brought the car to a stop. Let's talk a little bit about the interior. The first thing I want to say is that overall, I quite like the way it looks. I'm not a major fan of all black interiors. I've made that very clear in our videos, but uh, I like the styling of this. It seems kind of sporty with, with the little switches here and the uh, this style of this center console area. Tell me a little bit about the features. Right, so we've got a, I think it's a 10.25 inch screen here. And of course, we've got the standard things like a reverse camera, navigation, etc. So with the reverse camera, it's also 360 degree surround. And one thing which is a little bit unusual mm -hmm. is that we've actually got a sort of side camera so that when we're actually trying to go around a corner and we're mm -hmm. indicating, it will actually show you what's on that side of the car. I noticed that when we were driving. Yeah. I have mixed opinions about the usefulness of that. I, I think it's, I guess it's better to have it than to not. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're not normally going to be looking at the screen in that kind of situation, but I could see perhaps if you've got a blind spot or something, it might be a sort of second confirmation. Sure. That, um, so in that case, it might not be a bad thing. It can't hurt. So this yeah. is a this top of the line. Yeah. Okay, this yeah. is the top yeah. so of the this line. This is one hundred five thousand eight hundred. So about fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars or so, somewhere in that area. So in terms of material quality, I would say uh, appropriate. Yeah. Uh, I like this material here on the center console. I, I wonder if it, how well it would wear. Yeah. Um, 
but as much as I like some of the patterns and stuff, there are definitely some areas of, yeah, so not so great. The stuff. touch points are generally fairly soft, but other places are hard plastics. For sure. Makes sense for the price point. Let's talk a little bit about, this is a way. Yeah. Space is important. Yes. First of all, have you sat in the back seat? What's I the back have, seat like? Yeah. Now, in the front, uh-huh. headroom's not particularly good. It's not. It's surprisingly, um, surprisingly not Actually, very... one thing you notice, in the back, the headroom is actually much better. Yeah, this is, that was in the lowest seating position. Wow. The yeah. headroom is better in the back. The headroom okay. is better in the back. That's needed. But um, earlier, I, I had the seat pretty far back when I was driving, and I yes. sat immediately afterwards in the back seat behind the um, driver's seat. Yeah. And my knees were really right uh. up against the seat. So <laughs> legroom is not good. 4.7 meter car, I would expect it to have a pretty good rear seating. So that's actually yeah. kind of surprising, but it's yeah. not particularly I'm really not good. too sure why. Let's go even farther back. This is, yeah. again, this is a wagon. Practicality yeah. is king. Yeah. How much space can I get back there? It's what something like 1,620 liters Woo! with the seats down. And there's one really special feature with it. A lot of cars these days, the seats just fold down. Yes. The actual bench does not come out. Right, the bottom seat rests. Yeah. yeah. And the bench of this does come out. Let's get out and talk about the exterior yeah. styling because I love the way wagons look. And this looks pretty good. I think it's going to. Let's mm. get out and check it out. All right, Mark, we're out of the car. Let's talk about the exterior styling. I yeah. love the way wagons look, so I'm very excited about this. But I have an important question first. Yeah. You mentioned that this is a dealer car. That's right. Is that why it looks so unique? <laughs> this is certainly not a standard car. Though. Okay. That's kind of a relief, actually. Yeah. It's pretty wild, isn't it? It is. This is a wrap? Yeah. yeah. This is yeah, a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. So it's kind of a promotional car. Yeah. All right. So I think I saw from the door jams that it's actually supposed to be a gray color, I guess. I think it probably is. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm sure it looks, it looks fine and yeah. gray. This is wheels boy. We can't help for some reason, but get pink cars. The Wuling fighting pickup truck we had was pink. This has got a pink roof. It's yeah. just a trend for us. I'm glad we're staying yeah. on brand. One thing I should point out the box on top. That's also optional. That's optional. Yeah. See, I come from early 2000s automotive culture yeah. in the US where putting a box on top of your WRX or your wagon or something like that was the coolest thing you could do. So I actually love the way that looks. Right. I it's think it's flimsy awesome. though. It's really flimsy. It's fl- uh, uh, I believe you. It doesn't look particularly well built. Um, let's talk again about the exterior styling. On the front end, I think it's quite good. This is the mm. new era of Baojun styling, yes. right? They call it, I believe, the high end, high energy uh-huh. Interstellar Got that. Geometry Design Language. Wow. Quite a mouthful, hey? Quite a mouthful. Mm. That... <laughs> Why is it that every car company now has to describe their cars? Tell me about it. It's always galactic, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's always universal type things. So on the front end, what that, what that translates to is what I think is a pretty good looking style. We've got a two-tiered system here. We've got the headlights down there. We've got this. This looks like it would kind of in most cars that would be a full led strip across yeah, the front but there's just some drls yeah. on either side but yeah overall pretty imposing yeah uh, kind of nice i don't yeah. i don't mind it yeah i would like to i think i would like it more in the original gray color right one thing we should point out actually is the badge so this is the new belgian badge right the old badge was a horse yeah well, because now, the, the name the, the meaning yeah, yeah of belgian is ho- um treasured horse right funnily enough bmw means pretty much the same Balma, thing which is Balma the chinese, chinese name for yeah. bmw is also yeah. also kind of the same um but also one thing mm. on the back this says shin belgian new belgian new belgian yeah okay well they want you to know they want you to yeah. be really clear about that coming around to the side this is the best part this is the best part of every wagon right mm. it's the profile i love the way wagons look in profile well this profile is pretty good it's good i like the way i mean i like the rake of the yeah. that'll be a b c of the d pillar yeah we'll go d uh, pillar i like the overall profile it looks very nice the wheels are they're wheels <laughs> yeah that could be perhaps a little bigger well uh, it seems that i am cursed to only drive cars that have 17 inch or less wheels i can't seem to get my hands on a car with bigger wheels for some reason but around the back I can't get over that pink roof, man. <laughs> um, I like it. It looks it looks a lot like most of the Belgian cars, right? Yeah. This is very much the styling of a lot of the new Belgian. And we should actually point out new Belgian there. Right. This is Xin Belgian. Xin Belgian. New Belgian. This is, yeah. I guess, the this is their latest generation of cars. Um, one thing, I, I guess, now that I'm looking at it, I do want to point out. So this is where the badge goes. This is the yeah. Vali name, but it's it's... Missing an A, 
Now, I'm not going to put that on Baljun because this was wrapped, and I'm guessing they didn't do the wrap. So I'm going to put that on the, on the company that did the wrap and say they probably didn't do a great job of yeah. putting the badge back on. Uh, then again, Va uh, Baljun, next time, use a better shop. But well, also, if you look at the um, alignment, it's not right. Also, the alignment is not great. Yeah. With this the Shin Baljun as well. The Shin Baljun, not great. They probably should put more attention to detail. Yeah. But let's get down basics of the car. I think overall design, yeah. I like it. Thumbs it's a good up. looking car. It is. It really is. Mark, thank you so much. Thanks to you, we have finally driven a wagon on the Wheels Boy channel. Wagon's Wheel Boy. Wagon's Wheel Boy, fine. All right, fine. You brought this car to me. You brought it to my attention. I will allow you to call it Wagon's Wheel Boy for, for one day, okay? Um, thank you, Mark. Thank you to our audience for joining us for today's video for the first Wheels Boy Wagon review. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell, and check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Links in the description. Bye-bye.